Right, how's my hair? Hello, I'm Annette Ungeheuer and I'm taking you out on a stroll through Heathland's plant life okay so during the next few weeks we are going to look at plants in deep winter now in the dormant season where the whole tree is kind of is asleep more or less yeah like a hedgehog during during the winter it's asleep the trees too yeah so no foliage anymore no leaves on the trees and we try to recognize trees just on the Woods, okay so we uh, yeah we start at the bottom and or whatever and and work our way up and um, yeah I hope you have fun so we will come back in spring with when when the when the buds are opening and and then the flowers are forming okay and um, maybe in high season when everything is settled and they are green green not this bright fresh green in spring but green and, and and mature and then maybe we come back in autumn when lots of trees are having their berries and their fruits and the yeah okay so follow me um put your wellies on i i have already wet feet um well it is winter after all okay right Right, let's go over to the Scots Pine. Scots Pine is the easiest tree to identify because of the long needles. It's an evergreen tree. If you look up, even here in winter, where no other tree has leaves, the Scots Pine keeps the leaves. So it's shedding its needles or its leaves the whole year round. Yeah, a few at the time. Okay, have a look at the bark. The bark really thick you have to trample over here it's really thick barky bark it's about that that uh, thickness and it withstands some of some forest fires quite well really the the needles you you use uh, for cough syrup really the the buds of the of the new shoots they are used for that. Um, the pine cones in, in open up in summer in the heat and if you're really quiet you hear them trickling or cracking and, and all the seeds are coming out. The seed, each seed itself has a tiny little like a membrane and when it comes out the tiniest wind is kind of uh, blowing it away over that the new tree sits somewhere anew yeah far away from the mother plant uh, um, the this uh, Scots pine is a pioneer tree meaning that where, wherever there is some wasteland or no trees or whatever it easily see a uh, puts its roots down and and uh, starts growing there and it will go faster than than all the other trees which come after it I will tell you some more when we see a birch tree okay something similar okay these are all typical hedgerow plants if you have a look at this quite thorny uh, Bitterly thorny this. Here you see some old fruits. I take some off. This were or this is a hawthorn. Um, very very good. Hawthorn leaves, berries and, and flowers. Good for giving you a healthy heart. I mean I'm just telling you that. Uh, it, don't go out and self-medicate on that but it, yeah that's that's what a hawthorn is good at beautiful beautiful snow white flowers in in spring not a really particularly nice tree and mostly it uh, becomes a shrub yeah in hedgerows so not so 
yeah but i really like it i really i like that it can defend itself with the thorns and uh, against cattle uh, or people who want to get too much of them and the boots shall i get my can we see any boots let's have have a look a little close up the scaly small tiny doesn't look like anything does it um they go on both sides out irregular left right middle so it's kind of like on all all three sides the leaves come off okay that's that's that it's another one of them oh here we've got a rose hip it's not a tree but just because we are passing by here's a here's a rose hip nice beautiful flowers and the rose hips are, are great birds are feeding on them uh, and yeah it's great for making uh, vitamin c rich uh, syrup or or a jam or whatever nice um, more of the same more of the same look at this thorny bit that is that is particular possibly because it has been cut off and it develops more thorns than than normally wow i i wouldn't like to prune that bug more of the same and then or shall we go over here this is a really really oh no beautiful little apple tree but something came here and scratched it uh, you see and ripped all these all the leaves uh, the the bark away this is uh, will end up like that big oak tree over there you see all this middle bit is rotten and it uh, it will yeah fall down soonish enough I assume this has been done by a rabbit or by a deer even, you know, scaling it. Cox peppermint, one of my favorite apple, apple uh, tree. An apple tree, yeah, they are now really tight, tied to the stem. Um, later in year you will see a little bit, uh, when, when they open up a little bit more. Typical for an apple tree are the dots on the on the bark. Um, yeah, nice little tree, but I don't think it has a great future unless you cut it back and let it shoot out anew because uh, that will never never heal. Okay, come with me. And then we come to the mighty oak. Uh, so it's all too high up. So I can't really show you what's here. Here, here, come, come over here. Look at that. That is an oak. Okay, do you see this? Really many, 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 many of uh, little buds. That's how, how the oak grows. And it doesn't matter what kind of oak, they have all the buds coming out like this. Um, bark is first smooth grayish brown when it's young and then the older it becomes the more it breaks open and it becomes quite dense thick so that's a beautiful specimen of a tree we get from them the little acorns I don't know if we can find one on the floor have a look have a look I've got a husk there it was sitting in like this little pipe but I need to find a, an oak ah. it's not the most prettiest of oaks but this it is yeah these are the acorns of the mighty oak but it's they are loved by jays by squirrels uh, wild boars well we don't have any here but wild boars love them too and um 
yeah so not many are left left here this should be absolutely packed full of um, acorns but are all eaten all taken away so the jay for instance is taking them and buries them somewhere in somewhere away like a squirrel in, in, in a way um, squirrel does it as well and then they forget where they buried them and there a new wild oak tree will emerge it takes about 80 years 60 to 80 years before uh, the tree has acorns for the first time that's a long long so 80 years that's a whole lifetime of a human yeah before it has the first baby um, so this tree is in for the long hold really uh, yeah we have to come back when when the uh, the leaves are out uh, but you know you kind of know how oak leaves are they're lobed like so irregular lobed in out in out in out in out in out yeah so yeah that's about all i mean it's really full of tannin it's used for uh, leather making uh, the tannins uh, you can make dye of it of, of uh, black dye um, and in Britain the oak tree has nearly eradicated completely in the uh, Elizabethan time the Queen Elizabeth which was kind of before when was that um, a few hundred years ago uh, for the armada of ships they hacked down all of the big mighty oaks in Britain and there were thousands of them and they cut them down and made chips out of them so yeah uh, it was uh, horrible as well uh, it was used as well for other um, uses like burning yeah burning wood and, and, and stuff like that until there was um, a few hundred years ago a kind of a loose law made and, and they said don't do that anymore because we are losing all our our oak trees so after a um, few hundred years the, the, the oaks kind of oh there was a little sorry there was sorry I just saw a little <laughs> robin ha huh. It snapped something and I don't know what it was and it disappeared under that uh, B, B teaching center. Anyway, anyway, what, what was I saying? Anyway, that was the first project, kind of uh, environmental project to protect the, the oak trees yeah, 150 years ago. So yeah, good job because otherwise we wouldn't have, had, have oaks anymore. And now we go to this side and we have a elder, elder bush, elder, elderberry, elderflower, elderflower, cordial. I bet you know that. Okay, so these stems are woo, hollow, yeah, quite thick, no good for burning because they, they give off a gas. The buds. Uh, I have to put my specs on. The buds are on both sides of of the twig. Two go in this side and then they turn and then they go two on this side. And then they go two on this side, two on this side. So they, they are twisting around. Uh, and we have, we are fortunate to have some more leaves here. And they come on both sides leaves so it's between seven and you know five and uh, and and seven leaves um on each leaf yeah and the leaflets are kind of opposite each other like that um yeah the berries they build a big shallow dolder um and um not edible raw but you make the wonderful 
syrups out of him or jams or uh, really 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 red bluish purplish and um, they die up as well everything uh, so yeah, your hands after touching them will be all blue but yeah delicious delicious rich in vitamin C and yeah a good good tree to have um, it said that uh, in in the tree there are witches living or one witch in each tree so you have to ask for permission to cut something down yeah take a leaf or take a fruit or take a berry um, so unless you do it yeah well if you do it you're safe otherwise you might be not safe for the next few steps so follow me next got more hawthorn oak pods on the ground this is the bee the bee center the new bee center here isn't that gorgeous so they have planted loads of fruit trees here in this area yeah anyway so what have we got here you see all that green greenery in that tree that's ivy and it's really old uh, ivy because it's already flowering uh, well, or, or berries flowering uh, soon this whole tree will be covered in ivy and it will die because the, the ivy as beautiful as it is when it's like that yeah it's really pretty isn't it and it just goes up has little suckers which connects which sucks into the yeah it holds tight with little suckers in the bark and that's all okay but as soon as it's higher up it wants to wind around something and it does but this ivy strands become hard as wood and because a tree is growing and expanding it can't because it's restricted it's like in a yeah in a jacket and the the tree or the branches will die off so it's no good allowing allowing ivy to um, grow in trees you have to prevent it before it goes too high up so now I lost my hat okay let's uh, go to the next mind your steps it's up and down here <clears throat> and here we have this is from the oak this kaput Here we have, I don't know yet. Let's find out. That looks like, that looks like a poplar. Pretty so sure it is a poplar. But I have clever books. I find out more about it. So I take a tiny little snippet with me and I will let you know after, okay? So Secretaries, I ask for permission. May I have one twig? And it says, ah, yes, you may. And I take that with me. And then I check if this is indeed what I think a poplar. Very pointed, you see. Poplar uh, seeds are very pointed. Take my gloves away. Okay, right. Put that in my pocket. Okay, what have we got? What else? Another oak. Um, this looks like a willow. <laughs> or is it? Or is it not? What is this? Uh, n n n n I don't know. I don't know what it is. I would think it is a willow, but it doesn't look like a willow to me. Can't know any everything. Okay, further. Another 
wonderful big Scots uh, pine tree. Scots pine. Do you see the flaky, the flaky barks, orangey, and it falls off? Um, yeah, flakes off. We've got another horse on here. That's really good. And then another cartoon pass on oh 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 come here look at that look at i mean boots look at boot sizes i just cut from the maybe 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 uh popular a boot and look at that look at this there you can already see if the bud is as fat it will be a big big leaf won't it and that is Aesculus hippocastanum that, that is a horse chestnut tree okay so the horse chestnut has leaves like a hand maybe we find a full hand here I don't think so then. They have all disintegrated. Beautiful. It's too young to have um, fruit yet. Another few years and then uh, this tree will have conkers, as you call them. Yeah? The ho ho horse chestnut. Uh, there's a sweet chestnut as well. Uh, sativa. But we, we don't have that here in the, in, in the grounds. So this is the one which we just... Uh, we are do crafts with uh, the other one is edible oh yeah you can roast them in the oven okay right we're next another mighty oak oh look at that i can't tell you often enough and yeah you have to to really understand the tree you have to go out at different times of the day different times of the year season yeah see it in leaf in autumn leaf in, in spring how it actually comes out and and develops and now as well when when everything is dormant so yeah and take the time just sit down at the at the tree trunk and let i mean here we've got a bit of a noise from the motorway but um let the tree speak to you i mean this tree i i assume is uh, already here for hmm, don't know 120 130 years 130 years i mean i'm old that tree is just young with 130 years it can go 600 years it can become mighty mighty but slowly really hard wood uh yeah beautiful tree Okay, what else? We've got more of the same horse chestnut. Look at these. Uh, horse chestnut, what did I, am I talking? Yeah, horse chestnut, exactly, exactly. Big woods. In spring, even now, in spring, they are really, really sticky. Yeah, they have a, the, the zap is coming and, and before they even open, you touch the, the bud and uh, yeah, you are full of zap gorgeous I like them I like them very much they're, they're a bit uh, uh, under problems because there is this uh, moth miner um, which is uh, bringing from one tree to another uh, bacteria or, uh, or so and um, the leaves drop off far too early in the year and uh, you know a, a tree can with withstand that uh, having no foliage for a number of years but it, if it becomes every year uh, it's too much of a strain for the tree because they need the the leaves to feed themselves yeah to produce via sunlight water and yeah what the cars give yeah on what i breathe out um, they make sugars which feed the tree so without leaves they can't do it 
and then they can't feed themselves so therefore no growth and therefore hmm yeah they might might die sooner or later it's a long yeah it's a long suffering for trees it's not so that they oh i get ill and oh i die that dying can be over 10 years so yes i may not lose my trick here okay there's the same again different different uh behavior that tree goes like uh, yeah and this is really all upright this can become 30 40 meters high i climbed them uh, yeah, when i was young not any longer and then we come to a beech tree it's nothing to do with the seaside a beech is uh, B E E C H, not B A C H, and the beaches have really, really, really pointed spots. Like, wow, well, not really showing. Can you, can you see? And let go of my gloves. So, very pointed spots. Okay. Um, beaches. Have we got a beech leaf here? Imagine this is green. That's a beech leaf. Um, really a nice tree. Love it. Even when it's really, really old, it will keep this smooth bark. Loads of other trees become a really barky bark. Yeah, uh, uh, the beech kind of stays like this. This is as as rough as it gets. Here's an old injury and wood decaying uh, fungi, fungi are in there and they munch away on the on the uh, wood moss yeah the lichens and uh, yeah they eat it up this is just a fruiting body so when when the fungi fungus was or the mushroom was uh, young now it's really it's at the end of it it releases all the spores and wherever you find some some uh, old wood could be on the floor could be elsewhere it it just sets sets its foot and and grows inside so what we see here is only in autumn or the, yeah for a very short time inside there's a mycelium mud and it's going really really wide and 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 long and it's eating away okay so this is good for anything which is on the floor because otherwise we would have dead uh, trees all over the place but uh, um, yeah the, um, at the end of the day that won't help the tree at all so but we can't do anything against it. It's in. Um, can't get it, get it out. Um, each tree has a. They are. Or oh, every tree uh, lives in a symbiotic way with other fungi in the ground. And these fungi, they are preparing the soil. Whatever they find, they break down little. Uh, bits of uh, uh, food for the trees that the tree can take that up minerals up with the with the rainwater without the fungi it wouldn't work for the tree it wouldn't grow maybe as mighty or as, as good or as well so wherever you find a, a mushroom to pick to eat do you know underneath the soil there is kilometers of or miles or yeah of this mycelium mud uh, underneath which is supporting the tree okay take my stuff okay what else have we got uh, more of the same more of the same this is a coppiced willow these were willows maybe it was thought as a hedge um you see how they go up oh, 
if you were to cut them down to you know so far on the ground they would make a hedge again um yeah willow is is great for weaving for making baskets they have been used uh, a lot um there's one still one leaf maybe i can cut it really bendable and uh, you see oh it looks already as when the cutkins are coming Ooh. i have no glasses on i need to see properly um yes oh oh so soft you know when 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 they are coming in spring then they have their buds full of uh fur and if you if you just rub them somewhere it's so soft like a like a cut cut fur or so yes beautiful tree uh beast like them um two different ty types of uh of buds males and females the females are the softy ones which kind of then when they are fertilize they're opening up and the fluffiness goes and they are just yellow with loads of well they break open yeah and release then uh, their nectar for the thing and then in the end little seeds come out so yes wonderful tree here we see the lancelot leaves of of the willow good then we have this is a look at that closely and can you see the color like my jacket red okay so the red buds are from a lime tree the lime tree often lime has nothing to do with the lime or lemon uh, it's just the name okay lime it's uh, tilia it's it's a uh, uh, latin name sometimes they are green as well whatever but uh, but the most recognizable is when it's when they are like that red often they have these burrs which come out here at the tree trunk they are quite big sometimes they are up to here full and full and full of burrs yeah with little tricks um everything on the tilia on the on the lime tree is sweet yeah the the flowers are sweet the the uh, leaves are even sweet um the you have little beech nuts which you can eat they aren't sweet but you can grind them to a flower um it's a gentle tree it's um take this away this has been cut but anyway um so lime uh, lime flowers are excellent if you collect them and make a tea out of them if you have a flu or, or a cold they're really uh making you sweat and and uh, they are helping you to recover after or when you have a cold um you can eat the leaves in in springtime when they're really still really soft like that like salad um, but you would need to know exactly how they look so don't just go out and assume that's what it is you need to know that tree. so we will be back no, it's not clean. we will be back and show you the lime tree in in its green dress okay in spring um they have heart shaped leaves now okay it has been disintegrated a bit so there is a tip and it goes a little bit in and out so a little bit like a heart shape uh if you see many of them different ones you will agree yeah it's a heart shape because it's a tree of love and in the past in the in the olden days the the lime tree was always planted in uh 
in villages in, in in the center of a village and they had benches around where there were gatherings or or sometimes they made it as well big platforms around the tree and they danced into the spring uh, under a lime tree so the lime tree was always loved by humans and and, uh, and the closeness was was uh, looked for but as well the lime tree really likes to be close to humans because that means they don't have to compete with other trees and the lime tree wants to become a large tree without the competition of other trees so it's not really a forest tree well you can grow it of course in the forest but it likes to be large and expanding and solitaire tree so to speak nice wonderful tree okay what my things what now We've got another oak another oak look at double double oak double double branch it's a u fork sometimes you see v forks yeah that they are really clinging together um i don't know like like my thumb oh it's cold look <clears throat> like like that it looks like a boom now no yeah that the two two uh branches are coming together like this that that's then very dangerous that they break apart and and fall apart this is a u-shape and each one of them is grown um on its own account without any interconnection so that's a safe thing this can stand here another 500 years and i hope it will okay then we have dropping everything then we have here i need to then we have here uh, uh, Right, shall I angle that down? Let's see. There we go. Look, green. Yeah? The other one, the lime tree, was really red. This is larger. And it's really green and a little bit scaly. And that is a sycamore. Okay, a sycamore. It's uh, Acer pseudoplatanus. Pseudo means, so to speak, plane tree. It pretends to be a plane tree. It isn't a plane tree. It's an it's an acer. Um, yeah, these are the leaves of the acer. Um, you can. No, you shouldn't. But you could. You could get some sap. Yeah, make a little uh, injury in the tree and collect the sap, and um, you could make some um, syrup out of it. I wouldn't recommend it because every injury on the tree uh, brings fungi spore into it and it might rot. So this is only for plantations where, um, yeah, where the tree is just like used and harvested. If you want the tree to live, then we won't do it. What else is to be said? Um, there's there's a lots of times uh, on on, on uh, sycamore trees so look at these They're black tar spots you see that and and that is just a fungus who feeds on on the put out um, bits of an aphid so the aphids love sycamores the feed of, of sycamores, maybe because they are sweet, maybe uh, maybe the sap is sweet or whatever, then they drop their dribbles and they drop on the leaves 
and then the fungus comes and says oh I'm having these little bits of so and it's going to eat all the all the um, leftovers of the aphids up yeah um, doesn't harm the tree but sometimes you get big blotches or even more and you can answer the question yourself if, if, if the tree needs a leaf to feed itself and lots of black splotches are there, or there then the, the tree um, can't do photosynthesis so, so well so it can't feed itself so well so yes um, but not to worry it has been it has been fed on by aphids for hundreds of years and it, it still is around uh, it's actually not a native English tree so loads of people said oh you know slash and burn them because it's not an English tree but it is established for hundreds and hundreds of years in Britain and and I think it has its right to to stay here with us and this is a young one you know uh, I think it's 30 years or so and I think even the wood is good the wood is hard it, it, it's a good tree I don't know all this discussion of if something is native or not you start with asking uh, do we have to call the the gray squirrel because we uh, because of the red squirrel I don't know I th I always think l let it survive uh, if it does yeah let it live okay right that's a uh, sycamore so next I've got my angle here and I can angle another thingy down so these are all willows I don't know if you remember if you are from Heathlands we used to have here uh, a tunnel uh, a tunnel walk it was a big dragon um, so we were going through here it was all all weaved and this was one tunnel walk but nobody looked after it and now we can't really tunnel walk it anymore because it's overgrown so anyway um, if you were to want a, a little tunnel walk you could just cut it down to, to about here and it grows out in small thin uh, weavable sizes again now that would be a project for anybody you could just come out and do it anyway um, if I want to grow another willow tree I don't have to wait for a willow to set seeds and then have a tiny little baby tree or whatever you can just cut cut a tree like this off straight cut check take the side branches off make a hole in the ground plump it in heal it in and it grows it's amazing uh, yeah that that's a tree which you can grow anywhere okay as I said earlier, good for weaving, good for basket making. Um, now, um, in Workington, uh, Iggesons have their own plantations of willows, which will be chopped down, and they use it for uh, burning. The, uh, this is this is a green project. To in, instead of using coal, they use uh, a willow to to burn so it's actually quite good because it regrows all the time you burn it and you, it regrows again so it's not something which is in the ground sitting there um, and and will be taken out so the carbon footprint is far smaller um, that way okay right <sighs> I talk a lot don't I right here now now look at this one here what a monster big lime tree that is yeah okay so early on we saw a small one this is this is what they want solitaire growing big okay no competition great beautiful okay now i think we need to
No, that's a different one that's coming from the other side. Where, where is the start of this tree? And I'm looking against the light, I can't even see what it is. Is that the branch from this tree? Let's have a look. <sighs> what is this? Ooh. I don't know, but I've got a clever book. Oh, this is dead. I've got a clever book. I'm I'm not a hundred percent certain what this what this tree is. Shall we take a bit with us? Yeah? A little snap. Ask it for permission. May I have a twig? Thank you. No, take this one. Uh, 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 uh. There we go. Yellow, green, and that's the leaf. You see, I don't want to talk about it and find out later. Oh, that was wrong. Okay, put it in my pockets. There we go. Good. Next. Next. Uh, oh. It's a little bit difficult to see. There's a. There's a. Um, hazelnut here you see these round leaves and the hazel is here so these cutkins of the hazel are the males the females are sitting very small somewhere they aren't out yet no good glasses um they're tiny. The female flower is so tiny. I think I lost my glasses. Oh no. I have to go back. So somewhere here should be something really tiny red. Possibly not the right time of the year. In spring they will come more. They're more like just tiny bit of red fluff that's the female flower and only on the female flower the nut will grow okay so male male cutkins all the spores come out of here and they find the female flower which I can't see now okay right can you see this one here this is a birch and it's it's a, it's a, mo a bog birch, yeah, which is normally growing up. So, normal birches are white, as you well know. Uh, this bog birch, oh my hat, is is brownish red, not gorgeous. So, birch, same 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 leaf as a normal birch, but this one likes to likes to grow near water it likes uh, moody yeah deep waters more so than the other one it's really actually quite pretty if you were to come from here and see all the little buds gorgeous gorgeous yes what else can i say um not um uh, it has the same the same effect like uh, like the normal birches it has cutkins like here okay and birches uh, early on I spoke about the the, um, no? the pine tree which is a starter and, and this these are the cutkins of a of the seed, seeds of a birch now they oh, grow longer and ripen and then each of these tiny little scales becomes one seed and it goes Phew! the wind takes it away oh it sits there and the, uh, if it can uh, if it's near roadside it will be all on the floor but the the uh, next rain will take it elsewhere and this is a a tree which doesn't need anything you find them in gutters, you find them in little cracks. Um, birches are growing anywhere, anywhere. 
you see um and there's 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 the beauty of the tree so it occupies a, a place wh where there is no tree yet but then when it drops its leaves the leaves don't drop under the tree they go somewhere else and make the ground fertile for other more needing plants to to grow and it, it dies quite early so it's actually a very given tree isn't it it's like oh i'm coming here and i'm making this ground well for other trees around it is not so selfless beautiful beautiful little attitude of a tree yeah i like i like uh, birches because they are so female and 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 light and like a maiden hair tree uh, so this was the, the bog or more uh, birch and we see if we find another one the silver birch with a white box, okay?